The Magnums have been everyone's favorite weapons in Resident Evil for decades now, and for good reason. They are extremely powerful, look cool, and take out many enemies and bosses very quickly. The Magnums in Resident Evil 5 follow this trend and do not disappoint. What the game lacks in quantity for this class, they make up for it in quality, with three prime options to choose from. The standard 6 shooter, a rapid fire Desert Eagle, and of course, the 500 Magnum hand cannon. In this video, we will showcase them in all their glory. I will highlight the stats of the weapons and show how each of them can be used against a regular Magini and also the mini bosses of the game. I highly recommend fully upgrading any weapon you intend on using for the higher difficulties as your items and money will always carry over to new games. That being said, all gameplay is on professional with fully upgraded Magnums. Starting with the first Magnum, the SW M29. This weapon is modeled after the real life Smith & Wesson Model 29. This weapon is available to purchase at the end of Chapter 3-1 for 4000 gold, but can be found during Chapter 3-1. After the long boat sequence of finding all four key pieces to progress to the next section, you will find yourself in a village. Upon entering, take the route on the right and you will see a fallen BSAA soldier. On his body lies the M29. Take note. Once you pick it up, you will be trapped in ambush by several bow-wielding Magini. Eliminate them to progress. Fully upgrading this weapon unlocks the SWM500, the hand cannon. More on that later. Upgrading this weapon will cost you a total of 78,000 gold. The stats are as follows. Firepower of 3200, reloading speed of 2.83 seconds, capacity of 12 rounds, and increased bullet penetration. Next up is a Lightning Hawk. This weapon is modeled after the real life Israel Military Industries Desert Eagle Mark 19. This weapon is available to purchase at the end of Chapter 5-3 for 5,000 gold, but can be found during Chapter 5-3. During a fight with Wesker and Jill, Wesker will kick you into a door that unlocks the top portion of the stage. Follow the route upstairs until you reach a room. There will be a chest that requires two people to open it to your left. Once Sheva finally makes her way up to help your weak ass open it, the L-Hawk will be waiting for you, flanked by plenty of treasure. And while you're here, you may as well kick Wesker's ass a few times to take revenge for all the failed professional attempts. Fully upgrading this weapon will cost you a total of 71,000 gold, the stats are as follows. Firepower of 3,000, reloading speed of 1.36 seconds, capacity of 8 rounds, and increased bullet penetration. Final magnum in the game is the SWM500. This weapon is modeled after the real life Smith & Wesson Model 500. This is Resident Evil 5's hand cannon and performs just as you would expect it to. This weapon is only available to purchase once fully upgrading the SWM29 and will cost you 30,000 gold with an additional 89,000 gold to upgrade. I have made a standalone showcase for this weapon going into deeper detail and showing it up against all bosses and mini bosses in the game. Check that video out for a deeper dive. That being said, the stats are as follows. Firepower 5000, reloading speed of 3.18 seconds capacity of 6 rounds, and increased bullet penetration. This weapon will have enough power to take down elephants, giant mutated abominations to humanity, and everything in between. Now that we have the basic information of the main magnums out of the way, I will go over how they each stack up against the game's sub-bosses in order of appearance. Starting with the Executioner. So I'm sure this doesn't really come much of a surprise to anyone watching, but the magnums fare pretty well against all sub-bosses. Hell, they're even a great matchup for most of the main bosses in the game too. So while we don't really have much strategy involved in pumping rounds into these sub-bosses, enjoy the peace that is fucking these guys up. They sure deserve it after some of the hell we went through in the earlier showcases. Next for the Chainsaw Magini. One good thing to note with the Magnums while fighting the sub-bosses is that you can easily and quickly take out the surrounding Magini. No more getting smacked in the back and bleeding out while Sheva just stares at you until you inevitably die.
onto the giant Magini. Again, there isn't really much going on here. During most fights you will have with the giant, you will also have several Magini coming at you in all directions. With both Magnums, you can focus the boss and the little dudes all at the same time. It really is a must have for a professional. Next up are our liquors. So up to this point, we haven't had many weapons that could take on more than one or two liquors at a time. With both of these magnums, you can easily take on groups of them, as long as you target the biggest threats accordingly. Just don't get swiped or speared by their tongue, and you'll easily wipe them all out and take their loot. Now we have the Reapers. This boss is really the only one you still have to be careful on. Having some misplaced shots will make the follow-ups a lot harder thanks to the disorienting gas it produces. Too many missed shots will cause the distance to close and a potential instant kill for you. Hitting the weak point successfully will make sure this does not happen. Finally, the Gatling Gun Magini. The largest health pool in the game for the sub-bosses is still no match for the Magnums. Just aim for the head and make them your bitch. Enjoy the revenge. There's one final magnum in the game, but it is not in the main story, nor is it something you can actually use, but it is still worth mentioning during the showcase. In the Mercenaries Reunion, Barry Burton has his Silver Serpent. This weapon is modeled after a hybrid of the real-life Colt Python and Anaconda. When you play as Barry, you'll notice that the only magnum in his inventory is the SWM-29. He only pulls out the Silver Serpent during certain melee attacks, the Miranda Rites, and the Gun Bash. This video playing in the background shows each of them, and when Barry performs these moves, he uses the Silver Serpent. It kinda sucks you cannot use this weapon in the game, but it does make an appearance. So that concludes my showcase for every Magnum in Resident Evil 5, and now on to my final thoughts. It is difficult to choose one Magnum over the other, since they are all very good, but each have slightly different attributes to take into consideration. The Model 29 is probably the most balanced of the three. It has devastating firepower, a decent rate of fire, and a decent recoil control. The l -Hawk is a good choice for more faster paced run-throughs, as the rate of fire is quick, the reloading speed is quick, and it still packs a deadly punch with minimum recoil. And it also has superior bullet penetration. The hand cannon is go-to for certain bosses when you're done playing around and you want to progress through the fight quickly as possible. Out of the three, I usually keep the hand cannon in my inventory on any given playthrough and pass it Model 29 or Elhawk to Sheva. Having her equipped with only one of these magnums will help you tremendously on Professional as she doesn't miss shots 
and can route enemies out quickly, as long as the AI is on your side of luck. That wraps up the weapon showcase for the Magnums of Resident Evil 5. If you liked the video, please subscribe as I will continue to make weapon showcases like this for the game, eventually covering all the weapons. Check the descriptions for links to everything involving Resident Evil 5 and my weapon showcases for Resident Evil 4. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.